So there's really only two distributions in the multivariate notorious zoo. And we've talked about one, that multinomial distribution, which was talking about the probability of finding a particular combination of outcomes when we had a sequence of independent trials, and each trial was going to be one of many outcomes. So we use the multinomial distribution to talk about the probability of getting exactly two of each color when we open up a pack of M&Ms. It involved a lot of factorials, but it wasn't too difficult to work with. I think the one notorious distribution we have for the continuous zoo is the multivariate normal distribution. And this is because this is one of the very few distributions where we can actually write down a formula for it. And so let's talk about the multivariate normal distribution. So our notation for the multivariate normal distribution will be as follows. We're going to say that our random variable x, which now is going to be shorthand for a particular combination of a bunch of random quantities, x1, x2, x3, etc. We're going to abbreviate that with mvn, with just some text here, and we're going to say it's distributed with mu and sigma. But mu isn't just a single number, instead it's going to be a vector of mu's, one for each of the random variables in our distribution, and sigma is actually going to be a matrix. It's going to be the covariance matrix, which talks about how strongly related each of the random quantities are. Now, there's a formula that actually gives us the joint PDF of the multivariate normal distribution, and if we look at it, it involves some old friends. We look and we see we have the determinant of the covariance matrix, we actually do some matrix algebra, you know, take the matrix X minus the matrix for mu. We actually take the transpose. We get to take the inverse of the covariance matrix as well. So the joint distribution for the multivariate normal actually requires us to dust off our matrix skills and remind ourselves how these all work. In order to get that joint PDF, we have to actually work with it in matrix form here. Now, a lot of things at least vaguely resemble having a multivariate normal distribution. If I want to know the distribution of people's heights and weights, very close to a multivariate normal. Two quantities, so we would call it a bivariate normal. If I was looking at the distributions of, say, measurements of, say, different circumferences on a body, like wrist circumference, abdomen circumference, bicep circumference, the combination of circumferences is typically well described by a multivariate normal distribution. It's one of those few things that we can actually work with because we have the formula. Anything else, like a multivariate log normal distribution, yeah, we don't really have the mathematics for that written down all that adequately. So what goes into the formula for that joint PDF of the multivariate normal? Well, once again, x isn't just a single value. It's a whole vector uh, describing the actual values of our, uh, let's say, k random quantities. Mu is a matrix giving us a... Uh, uh, matrix of the k mu's for each of the random quantities. And so when we deal with the stuff up in the exponent of that PDF, it's subtracting matrices together, taking transposes of matrices. And so it's, you know, kind of a, a big deal. Now that covariance matrix, sigma, which we're representing by the capital Greek letter sigma, that's a big old square matrix that talks about not only how strongly related the different random variables are to each other, but then also what the variants are of the individual random variables. Now, the uh, correlation between any two random variables i and j in this setup would just be the covariance between those two random variables divided by their individual standard deviations. And so we can write this covariance matrix in one of two forms. Number one, we can write the variances across the diagonal and the off-diagonal elements being the covariances. Or, kind of my favorite way of doing it, I like writing the covariance matrix as the uh, diagonal elements, the variances of each one of those random quantities, and then actually writing it in terms of the correlations for the off-diagonal elements, taking the correlation between two random quantities, and then multiplying it by the two standard deviations involved. Now, if you wanted to actually write out the math, figure out what does that formula actually look like, well, you can do it, but... It's a lot of math here. You know, it's not really worth our time to go through and algebraically derive, well, what does a bivariate normal look like? What's a trivariate normal look like? Three random quantities. We can do it, but this is much more efficiently done in matrix notation. And if we really have questions about multivariate normals, once again, it's going to be easier for us to just simulate it and then look to see what the results of our Monte Carlo simulation imply.
Now, one reason we like working with a multivariate normal is that it actually has a lot of really cool and helpful properties. So if we have a combination of values, x, that does have a multivariate normal distribution, then if I look at any sort of weighted sum of those random components, well, I can immediately write down what the distribution is of that weighted sum. It's going to be a normal distribution, univariate normal distribution, with a mean that I can derive and a standard deviation that I can derive from the mu and the sigma matrices of that multivariate normal. Also, if I'm dealing with a collection of quantities that have a multivariate normal distribution, the marginal distribution of each individual quantity by itself is going to be a normal distribution with actually a predictable mean and standard deviation, mu1 and sigma1 for the first variable in that collection, mu10, sigma10 for the tenth variable in that collection. And then finally, if I want to know the distribution of one of those variables, let's say x1, for a particular combination of the others, say x1 given particular values for x2, x3, x4, well, I can immediately write that down as well. It's also going to be a normal distribution with predictable values for the mean and the standard deviation. And so this multivariate normal distribution is like this whole self-contained world. Once we're in this multivariate normal world, pretty much everything that we're curious about, distributions of combinations of other quantities, marginal distributions, conditional distributions, it's still going to be normal. Once we're in that normal world, we stay in that normal world, very, very convenient for working with. And you can see why, really, the multivariate normal distribution is our only notorious distribution in uh, the multivariate zoo here. So all of the multivariate normal distributions look kind of the same. There's some sort of flattened ellipse, maybe spherical, maybe more cigar-shaped in two, three, four, five, et cetera, dimensions. They're all elliptically contoured, and so using that correlation to describe the strength of the relationships between those random quantities is a valid thing to do. Now, instead of actually working with any of the math with a multivariate normal distribution, which I think is pretty tricky, I think it's much more advantageous to run a Monte Carlo simulation that actually generates random combinations of quantities involved in your multivariate normal, and then ask questions about the probabilities from the Monte Carlo simulation. So the most important thing, I think, from studying a multivariate normal is how do we get random numbers with a particular design, a particular mean vector, and a particular covariance matrix? Well, first, it turns out that we can't just arbitrarily ascribe numbers into that covariance matrix. Certain matrices do make valid covariance matrices. Others don't. Our main requirement in that in order to be a valid covariance matrix for a multivariate normal, that matrix needs to be positive definite. So what that means is that the determinant of that matrix needs to be bigger than zero. Or if we think in terms of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, the eigenvalues of that covariance matrix all have to be greater than zero here. So as long as that's the case, it does describe a valid setup, a valid set of correlations between the combination of quantities that we're discovering. And so we just have to keep that in mind. There are restrictions on a covariance matrix. But if we know what the covariance matrix is, we know what the mean vector is for our multivariate normal, how do we go about and actually simulate random numbers, random combinations of quantities? Well, it has some really useful code to do this. It uses some pretty advanced matrix techniques like the Cholesky de decomposition, but let's just quickly walk through how to generate this. So first off, I like defining a value n that contains the number of random combinations I'd like to have, and then I create a vector mu's, which tells me the average for random quantity number 1, 2, 3, etc. And then I'm going to define a vector SDs that tell me the standard deviations of x1, of x2, of x3, etc. that I would like my random numbers to have. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a covariance matrix, but I'm going to do this so that ones are across the diagonal, so it's kind of a, a correlation matrix here. And on the off-diagonal elements, that's going to contain the correlations that I want my pairs of random quantities to have. So the entry in the first row and second column of the R matrix is going to be the correlation between x1 and x2. Now once I've set that up, once I've set up n, mu's, sd's, and the correlation matrix, it just involves running the rest of the code, which does some fairly advanced matrix calculations. And then what happens is that the vector, the matrix x that gets created and populated will be random combinations of values from that multivariate normal distribution. 
So in this example, I tried to create a multivariate normal that had averages of 10, 5, and 1 for x1, x2, and x3. I see my random numbers have that property. It has standard deviations of 1, 2, and 3 as well as desired. And the correlation matrix of the random numbers, random combinations that I've generated match up with my design as well. So it's really not too bad of a process. And once we have that, once we have a big old matrix X that contains our combinations of randomly generated multivariate random normal numbers, we can ask questions like, hey, what's the probability that X1 is at least as big as 2X2 plus 0.3 times X3? We can write that as a mean of a logical condition, just like what we did back when we were learning about Monte Carlo simulations. We can put in that logical condition that describes our event of interest. So the first column of x being greater than or equal to 2 times that second column of x plus 0.3 times the third column of x and ask for the average of that logical vector. True is 1, false is 0, so the mean of that logical vector will be the proportion of elements that were true, basically the fraction of random numbers that satisfy our event of interest, our good estimate of that probability. Probability that all three sum together exceed 15, we'll take the first column plus the second column plus the third column greater than or equal to 15 as our logical condition, run it through, and we can find out what that probability is. Now, there is some useful commands in the mass package that you can um, exploit when dealing with the multivariate normal distribution. dmvnorm and uh, rmvnorm are ways to get the values from the PDF and random numbers from a multivariate normal as well. I like the Cholesky method a little bit better. There is a P and a Q version as well. I'm not exactly sure how those are calculated. I'm not sure, but it's there. Someone knows how to do it at least. They can knock themselves out with that. So let's try to model the combination of gas and oil prices that we have with a multivariate normal distribution. Making a scatter plot of those two quantities, we see what looks more or less like a flattened ellipse here, which is what a multivariate normal distribution can provide us. So let's go for it. Well, if we get the average values of oil and gas, that's going to be the components of the mu vector that we're going to have in our model. And if we ask for the correlation matrix of those two quantities, that's going to let us know what we want to have as our covariance matrix after we factor in what the standard deviations of the two quantities are as well. So we can run this through our script. We can say, hey, let's generate 500 random combinations with mu's SDs equal to the mean and standard deviations of the oil and gas prices that are in the data set. We'll use that correlation matrix and then just make a plot of what the actual data values were with those 500 randomly generated values from that multivariate normal in red. And we see there's a rough correspondence between those two quantities. We have a decent enough model, I suppose, for maybe using in our refinery Monte Carlo simulation where we generate a pair of profits for both of these quantities simultaneously. Before we were doing that independently, here we add a little bit more realism where we get the combination of those quantities.